Hello everyone, welcome to Cairo's House, and today in this episode we're going to be threading the handlebars, so front brake, back brake, DI2 cable. Um, I've made a modification here to my forks, which we'll talk about, and we'll just crack on with it. Hi everyone, welcome back. You'll probably notice that I've threaded both the brakes through the handlebars. I couldn't get the DI2 wire to come out in the middle. It always wanted to come out at the side, um, so we'll just have to deal with it. I've got the spacers and the uh, top cap on ready. I decided to thread both the brakes first because um, I did a practice run and it was very hard, let's just put it that way, to thread it back up the forks, tape off the cable, and then try and feed it through the bar whilst I was doing the rest on the bike. So I tried it last week, which was why there was no video, and I found that because the hole is in the back of the uh, forks here, it was pulling the whole of the top cap round, so it never sat central, on the frame it was always off like that and I couldn't put it back so what I've done is I've attached two cable ties um, right underneath where the hole is so it will sit like this um, and we'll look down it like that yeah that's how it will look um, I've glued them on um, just to try and keep that cable central to stop the whole thing spinning round. So uh, we'll see how that goes. It's a bit unorthodox, but if it works, it works. Okay, we've got the bike pre-threaded. So um, in the last episode, we threaded the DI2. It's all ready. So what we'll do is we'll just start uh, getting the feed in from the back brake through the bottom bracket up here. We'll have a wire coming out of there and we'll have one for the DI2. And then we'll put everything in and just pull it through is basically what we're going to do. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but basically you just pull the wires and the cables through as you're putting the bars on. Sounds easy. And it is with a bit of patience. So let's crack on. So we're going to be using my Lifeline threading tool and we'll use that for the back brake because it's the longest way around. I've actually lost my DI2 attachment for this in the garage somewhere. So this cable is magnetic all the way along. So it's, it kind of sticks to itself a little bit. So what we'll do, we'll come down here, we'll just adjust that. Uh, we'll pull out the little plastic piece, put that on the table. So we'll find the magnetic end and we'll put it in there and we'll magnetize it along. Feed it, magnetize it, have a little feel for it. There it is. He says, yep, yeah, there it is. So we'll pull that bit out. Then We'll pass it up the frame. So, let's get it going. About there. Yep, that's fine. So, feeding it up, pulling it up. Oops, lost the end of it there. Pass that bit. We'll need to go around here. Okay, I've got it with my finger. He says, letting it go. No, there it is. So we'll just pass it back up here. He says, because it's stuck to itself. That's not very helpful. Yeah, we can just pass it up like that. So we've now got it going in there and coming out here. Okay, like this. 
No. Right, there we go. That was easy. So, that's the first one. The second one we're going to do is using a very old beat up cable. So what we're going to have to do with this one is come in the DI2 hole here and come out here. So I may just be able to pass this one up. He says, may, may being the operative word. Okay, so. Okay, it's out the bottom. Now we'll just pass it up the head tube till it comes out the top. There it is. So that's the second part of the cable that we need. Now I'm going to attach this end to the DRT and this end to the back hydraulic brake cable. Unscrew that, unscrew that, that bit goes on there. Back brake cable is the one with the uh, damper on it. So we'll screw this like so into here. That means we won't lose it. And then we'll screw the adapter into here. So we won't lose it. And then it's magnetized on. All right, so that one is connected which is cool. And I'm going to connect this to the DI2 cable with some good old masking tape. We'll stick a bit of it like so. I'm going to go only for one bit of damper, just so it doesn't get in the way. There you go, fold it over. That's now cool. Okay, it won't pull out. It's beautiful. So I can now start to pull everything. But first we're going to do this. Now the front brake cable, which doesn't have to be very long, it's going to go through here. So it's come out the bottom like so. We're going to move that round so we've got some room. We're going to adjust that so we've got this coming out the bottom. It's going to go through my carefully prepared cable ties, which I glued and probably have shrunk now because I've put too much glue on there. So in they go. What I did was I actually glued two bits of hydraulic cable through here. So there we go. And we're carefully going to maneuver that through its hole. This is the first time I've tried this. It was a good idea on paper. There we go. Once we get it going, it actually goes in quite easily. So my plan is doing all right at the moment. And there it is, it's come out. So it's out. So I can just pull on that bit now. And that has worked out quite well. Keeping it straight, going around the side. Yep, I'm happy with that so far. But we've made a fatal error. So I'm going to have to pull that back out and I'll tell you what the error was after. See the fatal error we made? Didn't put the bearing in. That's not very clever, is it? Anyway, it's really quick just to re-thread all this stuff. So let's put that all the way down so I can catch it with my fingers. Okay, and then we'll put that back in there. There you go. How cool is that? So we're in. Okay, let's uh, start again, shall we? Front brake, push the brake through. 
and then thread it down the hole. Seems like the easiest way, doesn't it? And it's come out the bottom, so I can just thread that. Can I just pull on that now, or is it is the bend too much? No, I can't. I have to thread it down. So, what we'll do, it wants to twist already. See, it wants to twist round. That's the problem we're having. It wants to go backwards, but we'll keep it forwards somehow. That's not very helpful if, if you're if it always wants to go. But this happened last um, week, so I'm not bothered. As we thread it down, I think they're actually a little bit tight, my cable ties. Right, so yeah, we're getting a good pull on it now, and now it's straightened itself out. It doesn't want to pull anymore, which is really handy. So if they were straight, it would be much easier, but they want to, to bend around. So, um, what have we got here? Okay, just getting this sorted. So this wants to go this side. So we'll let it. And this wants to go this side. So we'll let it. There we go. So we're all set now and we'll just start pulling on the on the stuff. Okay, so that brake is out. Front brake is hanging. It needs a de-twist. Problem is it's all twisted up. So as you can see, it's kind of in a coil. So the whole thing wants to just twist around. Which is a bit of a bind. Hmm. And we're going to untwist that now. Can't have it twisted like that, can we? There we go. So, a little bit of de twisting. I can leave like that. For some reason, my DO2 wires come out from between all of my stuff. So, Let's just refit that. Clearly, I didn't check it before I pulled it through, but that's why you just need a little bit of patience. Yeah, just make sure you're getting everything right. Okay. And we can thread that back. I'm actually quite um, pleased with how this is going uh, up to now. So, just pull that through. There we go. So, DR2 is through. We've got our cables. We'll bring in the front bit. So everything's got to go down the front of there, which it does at the moment. Just going to pull on the front fork. Okay, so we've got it up to there. So, let's push up on this fork. You probably notice that they all want to go behind. See, they all want to go behind. And you've got to get them in front, so. All the cables are twisted, look. Yeah, that's the way it should be, around that way. So that one's not too bad to, uh, to manoeuvre. They've crossed over somehow, which is annoying. Okay, let's 
pull that one out. Let's uncross it. So it should come out in the middle. Just a little bit of patience, you know? That is how I want it. The problem we're having now, I haven't got 10 hands. Hmm, this is interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is angle this down. Okay, we've now got the clip in. Whew. And it all seems to be pointing the right way, which is really cool. So, I'm going to put on this. Then I'm going to put on my two spacers. So, let's just take a look at what we've got. So, forks in, uh, top cap, spacer, spacer, sleeve, all the cables going down the front. It's not twisted. What I'm going to do is push down on the handlebar and pull all the cables through at the same time. Handlebar is on. It wants to hit the table though, so we'll just raise it up. I'm quite impressed so far. Just give a little tug on this one. There we go. Little tug on the back brake, tug on the DIT, and the handlebars are on. And they're not twisted. So, a little bit of patience. So, looking at my recording, we've got 35 minutes and 30 seconds. So now I can just connect up the DI2, push that back through, put the cap on, job done. So, that goes to there, and my damper is stuck somewhere in the frame along this cable route. That one can go into the frame. Like so. Just screw it in. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. Very impressed. Let's have a little look. Let's raise it up. In fact, I'll take it out of its mount. And then we can have a look what we've done. Okay, so after a little bit of a hard start, we've got everything we need. Let's just undo that. We're gonna set up the brake next time, put on the rear derailleur, put on the front derailleur, do the front brake. Um, but overall, that actually looks pretty cool. I'm impressed. I think we've got... Maybe we can... Yeah, close up that little gap there. So that's sticking a little bit proud. So what we're going to do is put a 5mm spacer on. I've got two here that I bought from AliExpress. One is quite short, but it's still thick enough to take all of the pressure there but I'm going to use the slightly longer one and the reason is is because this one is really grippy that diamond knurling is almost sharp it's really um that will grip really well this one is like dead smooth and I'm afraid that it's going to pull out so we'll turf that one aside you put this in your stereo tube and as you do it up it expands and grips the uh grips the inside of the steerer and then you can put the top bit in. We'll slop it in. Look how long that is. That's going to be huge. Let's just angle that. That goes right down into the, into the frame. So, plop that in. Do it up. Hold the top till it bites. There we go. It's bitten. I'm yeah. going to put this at uh, 6 newton meters. Um, I've already greased the thread 
into the main part. Turn it round, turn it round. Okay, that is now on. We're going to put the top cap in with a 5mm spacer. Top cap, just the grease of threads here, just waterproof grease. Okay, so put that through there. There we go. Put that in there. Now it round. Okay, straighten up the name if you want it. I want to put it up and down. And this is there, just so it doesn't move. It's smooth, doesn't feel like they're wobbling. So, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you on the next Kairos House. Take care, bye!